What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Hope you guys had a great weekend. As you guys know, I was out of town. And I ended up, the good news is I ended up having to change my flight because I told you guys I didn't know if I was going to be able to do anything today because I had to, um, but I ended up having to change my flight. So I got back early so I can bring you guys some content today, which I really do have a lot to say. So let's get ready to get into this. Hold on, you guys. I am, hold on. Uh. I am trying to share this out. As you guys can see from the thumbnail, I will be interviewing Winter Harris on April the 29th. Um, as you guys know, you may or may not care. I know everybody's not a fan, and that's okay. You know, um, we're going to talk to Winter. Winter um, is leaving the show. She has said that multiple times, but she um, – said that she would do a limited number of interviews. You guys know she did an interview with Queen Sheba earlier this week, which I thought was a pretty good interview, depending on how you feel about Winter. You may or may not agree. And again, that's fine. Um, but I am going to speak with her at the end of the month, which would be after the reunion. So don't feel like it's going to be the same old questions. I'm going to go out of my way to not ask the same questions. Um because that's boring. Um, kind of like I'm feeling about all of these Carmen interviews. I feel like it's the same questions and the same answers. I'm going to get to Carmen in a minute because I have definitely um, had my opinions about Miss Carmen. Okay. So let me finish posting this and we're going to get started. You know, we got to get two things out of the way. We have to get the season finale and we have to get... Um, Sorry, y'all. Hold on. All right. We have to get um the season finale and the first part of the reunion out of the way. Now, I said last week when I did my review last week that that is not a good sign when they start doubling up episodes like that, especially with the reunion. What that says to me as a reviewer, as somebody who has reviewed these shows and been doing this for years, that is not a good sign, okay? That is not a good sign. Hey, you guys. Hey, hey, hey. Um, and I'm, can I tell y'all something? Listen, I know y'all don't want to hear this, and I know that, you know, my people watch the show. I know people that are on the show watch the show. Um, can I say this? <laughs> I'm just going to call a thing a thing. It ain't looking good for y'all coming back on a lot of levels, on so many levels. It ain't looking good for y'all coming back. I'm not saying y'all not coming back. I'm saying it ain't looking good. Again, as somebody that does this. But let's get into it. Sorry, y'all. I, I put on my lip gloss, but I put on the wrong lip gloss, so. Let me put a little color. Y'all know I got to come to y'all with a little color. All right, let's get into this. So we start this episode off, child. We are still at um, Urena's wig event. Urena, did, shout out to Urena. Because she reached out and said, yes, girl, I do have a blonde bob. So I don't know. I'm gonna have to get, child, I might, I might play around with it this summer. Y'all know in the summertime is when I do my braids and stuff. So I might play around with a wiki, wiki, wiki in the summer. But y'all know I don't know what to do with no daggone wigs. But we're going to get into it. But shout out to Urena. She watched the review and was like, girl, yes, <laughs> I can hook you up. Um, Chuck said, I need to hear you should side. Karma has three faces. Ooh, well, I didn't watch the interview with Queen Sheba. Should I watch? I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. When you say, should you watch? I think it was a good interview. But again, if you are. See, the thing about this cast is. The, well, think about the fans. It's a divided. It's a divided fan base. I don't know where you fall on the fan base, um, Raveen. And again, y'all know I've done it. I've tried very, very hard to walk that tightrope <laughs> and walk right down the middle. I feel how I feel about different situations, and I don't dislike anybody on the cast. First of all, I don't know these people personally to dislike anybody. But I don't dislike anybody on the cast. Now there are certain versions of the story I choose to believe who I choose to believe. The thing about a story, when somebody tell you their story, you can either believe it or you don't believe it. Um, there, there are stories that I believe. 
And then there, there are versions of the story that I don't believe. And then there are versions of the story that I think we're getting a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So I just dissect it for my brain the best way I can. Hey, Mr. Willie Brown. And then I'm going to just take it from there. That's just how I feel about it. Now, when it comes to winter, last season, she wasn't one of my favorite people. This season, I, I liked her more. You know, I liked her more. Do I believe her version of events? Um, When it comes to some things, yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to ask her when I interview her, I'm going to ask her about things I have questions about. Things that I have questions about, I'm going to ask her about. You know what I'm saying? I know that the Tylers are, the, are um, before somebody say, why you ain't interviewing the Tylers? Um, I, y'all know I already, I really didn't want to do no interviews. So, but I know the Tylers are, y'all go over and watch their YouTube channel. They tell their story on their channel and y'all get them their, the views. Y'all go over there and y'all hear what they have to say on their channel so they can get the views. Um, I'm definitely going to um, keep up with Jamie and Urena moving forward. And I'll definitely always provide a place where they can, you know, advertise what they want to advertise and support what they have going on. I really like them as a couple. I do. I just don't think this show. We'll get to that. Y'all got me going left, right. Let me get back to this. Let me. Let me get back to this, 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 let me get back to the middle. Okay. So we talk about the whole thruple thing. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm over the thruple thing. I feel like I've talked about it three times and I gotta talk about it again at the end of this episode. So honestly, all I'm gonna say about this whole conversation about the thruple and whether Joy defended or didn't defend or had karma's back or didn't have karma's back. When I get to the end of this episode, I'm gonna break this whole karma thing down based on my opinion of the Carmen thing but when it comes to this throuple situation I'm gonna say the same thing I've been saying y'all look all of y'all played into that throuple thing y'all thought it was funny and y'all thought it was cute at what point did Carmen stop thinking it was funny and stop thinking it was cute I don't know but what I know for a fact from my point of view for a fact is that I followed all of them on social media going back to ready to love and when I, they took that first road trip. I think they went to Nashville and they did a road trip. We'll come to find out it was supposed to be the couple's trip, but that's when Carmen and Donovan broke up and they said, well, come on and go with us anyway. And they made a whole joke about it. And that is where the whole thruple thing came about. I remember it. Okay. You're not going to pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. Then it sort of grew legs because we kept seeing Carmen and Cliff in together. Carmen and Cliff, Carmen and Cliff, Carmen and Cliff. We very seldom saw Ashley, I mean, Joy with y'all. Now, Carmen says, oh, well, what you guys don't know is that Joy was right there. Okay, well, what we know is what y'all post. And what y'all posted was the two of y'all. So, again, it was cute until it wasn't. When Carmen decided it wasn't cute anymore, I don't know. I don't know. But you're not going to sit here and act like you was never, you never thought it was cute or you never thought it was funny. Maybe once she got a boyfriend. But neither here nor there. I'm going to get to that in a minute. I'm going to get to that in a minute. That's separate for the reunion. Said a lot. Listen, L Lisa, I'm, that's, listen, when we get to the reunion, uh, girl. All right. Let me hurry up because I got to get through two hours and it just wasn't that much for me to get through two hours. But... So then we see Ashley and Quick talking about the marriage, the state of their marriage. Let me say this, Quick. Quick. I know you don't, you're not listening, but somebody that is a friend gonna tell you the same thing I'm telling you. Somebody is that is a is a friend of you is gonna tell you the same thing I'm getting ready to tell you. Quick. A warning always comes before destruction. A warning always comes before destruction. Now, whether we see the warning, whether we heed the warning, sometimes we see it as 2020 vision. They say, you know, it's things, you know, it's always 2020 vision when you're looking back. Maybe you don't see it, but we're seeing the warning. Your wife has said multiple times, multiple ways, multiple levels that she needs more than what you are giving her. She said that you make it about, about a money thing. Listen, money is great. 
And we all aspire to live a debt-free, worry-free life. We we all aspire. Like, like that's why we get up in the morning and go to work, right? If we didn't care about having money, food in our, you know, refrigerator money in our pocket and our bills paid, we wouldn't work. And there are people who don't work because they don't care. But for those of us who get up every morning and go to work, some of us go to work, we don't even go to a job we don't even like. Why? Because we care about having things. And we know that the way we have things is through money. Quit. You are at a point in your career. Now, a lot of people outside of the area might not know, but I know because I'm here and I've been around and I've, I know I've, I've been here to DJ Quicksilver my whole life. Okay. You absolutely can make some adjustments on a permanent basis that will improve your home life, and you can still make money. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You you, you, you can. You really can. Um, imagine, let me, can I say something? Imagine if DJ Quick had done what, um, D Nice did during the pandemic. Remember, remember D Nice. For those of us, I mean, like I know who D Nice was. I remember D Nice going back to KRS One. You know, like I know who D Nice is. But a lot of people did not know who D Nice was, right? Because he was old school hip hop, and he was doing more behind the scenes than in front of the scenes kind of things. And for whatever reason, when we don't see people, we think they ain't doing nothing. That don't mean they ain't working. That just means we don't see them, right? But during the pandemic, when all of us were home and we had to be home and we were stuck at home, D-Nice went down to his Instagram. And he titled the Instagram live quarantine, what do you call it, quarantine music or quarantine something. And he literally just started playing music. And everybody was in his chat. From the Michelle Obamas to the everyday Joe Schmo, Right? Everybody with blue checks, that's before they changed this, the formula, blue check really meant something. Everybody with the blue checks on down. And D-Nice has created a whole second life. Club quarantine. Thank you, Ms. Baythane. And D-Nice has, has created a whole second life for himself based off of his club quarantine moments, right? I'm not saying that Quick had to do that. What I'm saying is, Quick, we live in a world now where you can create your own lane. You can create your own lane. And if you really wanted to, you could be doing that radio show from your basement, sir. Look at all of these other radio personalities that can go live from their home. I don't, Steve Harvey more on the show. They ain't been in the same room in years. Not on no type of consistent basis. Tom Joyner, same. When I found out that Tom Joyner, that they weren't all in the same room, baby, I was blown away. I really thought that all of them were in the were in the same room. Ricky Smiley moves around. Sometimes he's in the studio, sometimes he's not. You know what I'm saying? So your wife has told you, your child has told you. So at, at a certain point, you are willingly and willfully choosing other things over your family and we just gonna have to call a thing a thing i'm not going to speculate on why i'm just going to say what we know right and we just gonna have to call a thing a thing so if you wanted to be home more you could be home more and it would not change your lifestyle in my opinion now granted i don't know y'all paperwork i don't know y'all bank account but i don't think it would affect your lifestyle by you turning down one or two gigs a month and using that time to take Ashley out on a date or do something with the kids. Like, literally, your daughter told you last week that you don't never come to none of her dance recitals. Like, you literally, literally, literally. I don't believe that, Raven. You said he might not have an option. I don't believe that. I think he does. I think, now, when I say have an option, does that mean that he doesn't have to work at all? No, he's got to work. Like, I'm not saying he has the option to not work at all. He's got to work. But I don't believe he has to work the way he works. But that's my opinion. That's my opinion. But either way, it came up at the reunion, and your wife said it at the reunion. Your wife said it in her confessionals on the show. 
Your wife said it in the first season. Your daughter said it. And at a certain point, we just got to stop saying it. And when we when we hear that, you know, whatever, 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 people are just not going to be surprised. People are just not going to be surprised. So with that being said, oh, you said, no, I'm saying soon. I actually won't give him an option. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, my bad, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soon you're not going to have an option. You're absolutely correct. So with that being said, y'all, um, <clears throat> Um, well, you said you agree with Miss Gigi. What Miss Gigi said? Hold on, let me scroll up. Quick does not want to make adjustment. He has checked out of his marriage. I would too. Oh, okay. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> we know that she don't like, uh, she don't like Ashley. Miss Gigi ain't no Ashley fan. Okay. All right. So let's scroll down. So then we see Jamie, I mean, not Jamie. Then we see Urena getting ready for um, Jamie's party. It's his retirement party. And it looks really, really nice, right? Definitely Urena um, definitely knows how to put on a party, put on a show. Everything looked really nice. Um, we see Lil Jamie is there helping her set up. And they get to talking about his relationship with his father. And what we find out from Lil Jamie is that he feels like him and his dad don't have time, don't, don't spend enough time together. Like, now that he's retired, he feel like he still don't have time to spend with him. And I thought Urena brought up some good points. Urena said, look, why don't you ask him to do something? Like, why does he always have to approach you? Or why does he always have to extend himself to you? Are you extending yourself to him? Are you saying, hey, Dad, what you doing Saturday? You know, let's go check out a game. Or, you know, I want to go look at a car. Or, I, you know, there's some sneakers I'm going to pick up. You want to ride with me and we get something to eat? Like, Jamie is grown now. Like, like well, Lil Jamie, you're grown. I don't know should we call you Lil Jamie, but, Jamie, you know, you're grown. You know what I mean? Do you have to, do you really have to wait for him to reach out to you? But then, on the, on the flip side, though, your Raina kept talking, and your Raina was like, well, you know, sometimes you just be in a mood and your father be like, I don't feel like dealing with that. I don't feel like dealing with his attitude. Or sometimes, you know, you, you, you know, you, 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 um, you sad or whatever. And he like, I don't feel like dealing with that. See, you, you ain't need to add that part. You ain't need to add that part. Because I was with you, Urena. Because now you're saying two totally different things. Now you go, you went from, well, you should reach out to him because, you know, you're grown. You should wait for him. But then it was. Well, you know, sometimes he feel like you got an attitude and he don't feel like dealing with that. So is it Jamie don't want to deal with little Jamie's mood swings or is it little Jamie just needs to be take the initiative? Like, I don't even know. At this point, I really think that What I'm getting ready to say is going to be very harsh. It's going to be very harsh what I'm getting ready to say. Listen, sometimes you just have to take the relationship that you have with people and do the best with it that you can. I I don't know if Jamie, Big Jamie and Lil Jamie, because of their personality, both of them have to be willing to work on it. Both of them have to be willing to come together. It certainly seems like it's in a better place than it was, right? It definitely seems like it's in a better place than it was. You say you think it can be both. I don't know because here's the thing. I'm, I'm speaking for myself. I'm speaking for myself. If I'm talking to somebody, I, I'll use the same scenario. If I'm talking to my mom about wanting to spend more time with my dad and my mom says, well, why don't you reach out to him? You know, you're grown. Why don't you invite him out? Why don't you take him out? And then in the next breath, my mother says, well, you know, sometimes he, he, he say, you know, you do have attitude and he'll fight dealing with that. That immediately, I'm talking about me. I don't know nothing about little Jamie. I'm talking about for me. Now I'm shut down again. Because what you just told me was, even if I reach out, if he perceives that I have an attitude or he perceives that I'm not in a good mood, he's not going to want to hang out with me. So you, I'm talking about for me, now I've shut down. But I'm not going to ask him to do nothing now. Because to me, it seems like that should be when you want to meet. Like, but what's going on? Why you, why you mad? What's going on? Especially knowing their relationship and what they dealt with in their relationship. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I For me, I hear what y'all saying that it can be both. But I'm telling you, for me, that, that first part, for me, would trigger the second part. 
I'm not, I'm, and that, that's my personality. That might be a me personality. That might be a cancer personality. I don't know. But now I'm not reaching out. You you literally just told me that when he feel like I got an attitude, he don't want to be around me. Cool. Then I ain't asking him to do shit. That's a me. That's me. I'm telling you how I would have responded. But I agree. Now that I agree, Kenya. I think they just need to keep going through therapy and getting to know each other as adults. Because see, here's the thing too, and this happens with parents a lot as well. We have to, parents, I say we, I'm nobody's parent, but I know my parents, you have to get to know your adult child, right? And I think that big Jamie and little Jamie have to just continue to work on getting to know each other in the role that they play now. But I think that continuing to go to therapy, continuing to listen to each other and understanding each other, I think will be, will go a long way. I think part of the problem, in my opinion, is that both of them are still holding on to how they used to move with each other. So I agree, Stacey Renee. Everybody on this damn show needs therapy. Now that I can agree with. They all need some damn therapy. But that's just how I feel about the situation. Um, what's up? Hey, no, Lisa Abel. Um, so that's the situation. So um they even brought up Jason. He was like, well, when Jason, y'all always doing stuff with Jason. And I'm I'm saying, I feel like, number one, Jason, at the, at the time they filmed this, Jason wasn't living at home. So when Jason came home, of course, spending time with Jason was a priority because he wasn't living there at the time. But number two, like like Urena said, but we ask you if you want to do stuff and you don't want to go. Y'all, don't, when we go to the movies, when we go, you don't want to do it. And Jamie was like, nah, I don't want to do that. See, again, sometimes spending time with somebody is about doing stuff you may not always want to do if it's about spending time with them. Maybe the movie that y'all are they're going to see isn't a movie you want to see, but maybe, little Jamie, you might need to eat that and be like, okay, well, this time we're going to see such and such. Next time, maybe next time I want to see such and such, but I'm going to eat that this time so we can spend some time together. Yeah, they did the panel, Jamar. They did it last night. I was out of town, but they did it last night. Um, I think they were on D's channel. It's me, D. Um, well, no, I'm sorry. His channel is um, House of D. House of D. H A U S of D. D D Dior. Is it D D Dior? Yeah. Um. But anyway, so that's all I'm saying. But I agree. I think I just think they need to just keep moving forward. I think they're moving in the right direction. It's just slow. Look. Y'all relationship didn't get where to where it is overnight. It's not gonna be fixed overnight. Just keep moving forward. We moving forward. Okay. Then we get to everything might be catered around Jason. That might that might be little Jamie's point. And maybe it is. I mean, again, I don't know. I don't, I don't live with them. But I will say this. I'm gonna say this. As a middle child, as as a fellow middle child. Jamie is the middle child. Brittany is the oldest. Little Jamie's in the middle. And then Jason is the baby. As a fellow middle child, we do get lost. And our parents don't mean to do it. It's not with any ill intent. And those are conversations that I had to have with my parents and with my siblings. Because as the middle child and because I was... I don't want to say the good one because I'm not going to use the word good, but the least the least problematic out of the three. You do get you get lost. You get lost. And when you are the the, the child, you know, you you get lost. And with Jason needing, you know, more of their attention, maybe little Jamie did feel lost. Maybe little Jamie. But again, those are conversations and those are hard conversations. Let me tell you something. Those are hard conversations to have with your parents because most parents, not all, but most parents, most parents do not set out to be quote unquote bad parents, right? They're not, people aren't perfect and people make mistakes and people make decisions based on factors that we as children don't always know or understand, right? Once I was able to have conversations with my parents and my brother had, my brother felt a way about certain things. I felt a way about certain things. My sister felt a way about certain things. And once we were able to have certain conversations and see, one, see stuff from other people's perspective, but two, sometimes you don't have all of the facts. You think you do, 
but you don't. Because our parents don't tell us everything because they don't need to because they are the adults and their job is to make sure that we're good. So we don't need to know that, you know what, mommy might not have made it, you know, to all your basketball games because mommy had to work. You know why? Because we had a hospital bill that was on our neck and we had to pay it off. You know what I'm saying? Like those aren't always the factors that are shared or, well, you know, dad, you know, he was trying to get this promotion. So he was kind of, you know, he had to kind of do some, you know, work harder and, and work longer hours for a couple of months trying to, and in Jamie's situation by him being a cop, I'm sure there were a lot of elements that he just could not bring home, right? So with that being said, um, middle child here was more mature and street smart. My mother didn't have to say words for me like she had for my younger sibling and she gave more attention to them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Exactly, Kenya. And that's where perception comes in. And the thing is, my perception is my reality. So that's why, yes, I agree. There needs to be more therapy. There needs to be more conversations. Um, I'm not saying Lil Jamie is all right. I'm just saying Lil Jamie ain't all wrong. I'm not saying Big Jamie is all right. but I, Or all wrong. I just think that that's why there needs to be more conversation. And poor Urena is in the middle and she's probably getting the conversations from both of them. And she's trying to figure out a way to relay certain things to each to the other one without one betray betraying the trust. Right. And two, so that you're giving them the information, but you're not giving them everything so that they can still have the conversation. Right. Exactly. Can you many of us have the unhealed trauma from from childhood? Right. I'm the middle child. I was the most independent due to the less attention given to me. Right. I feel the same way. I feel like I was too. Right. Um, so yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I didn't mean to spend this much time on, on that scene. So Ashley and um Ashley and um Joy meet up to do some shopping, child. Um First of all, that little boutique is down the street from my house. <laughs> I knew exactly where they were. I mean, I've never been in that little boutique, but I knew exactly where they were, right? That's what I love about this show, y'all. I love the fact that I see so much of what I of my reality, my world in this show. I don't get that with Potomac as much, but I definitely get it with Love and Marriage DC. Is that I get the DC of it. But yeah, that little boutique is not too far from my house. Um it's down there. Um, if I'm wrong, if I'm if I'm wrong, my DC people correct me. But it's down there by the Upper Marl Upper Marlboro Courthouse, right? They were over there by the courthouse, right? In Upper Marlboro. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and if I'm wrong, somebody put it in the chat. Put it in the chat if I'm wrong. If you know where that place is, and I'm wrong. But it looks like it's a small business, a black business. So y'all go support it. Um, looks like it's down by the courthouse in Upper Marlboro. You saw the address, or you saw at least the name of the building in this shot. So y'all go, y'all go support, support that sister. Ashley is taking Joy shopping, and it's an opportunity for them to um continue to build on their relationship. Ashley pissed me off in this scene. I'm gonna tell you why. So they're having a good time, right? Joy was a good sport about Ashley dressing her up, right? Joy was a good sport about it. You could tell Joy didn't care. Joy was over it. Joy is clearly not a fashionista like me. Like, I'm not a fashionista child. I don't care. Joy clearly does not care, right? But she did it for the purposes of them trying to find some common ground, have some time together, build on the relationship. But here's what I think happened. I think that Joy really, really, really tried. The scene was not Ashley's fault. Okay, see, I disagree, but we'll get to it. I think Joy really tried to move forward with the friendship with Ashley. But the reality of the situation is you can't move. It's, go, it's hard to impossible to move forward in a friendship with somebody that, that not only dislikes your spouse, but is vocal about it. See, it's one thing. I told y'all before, I have friends. And I don't like that their significant other, but I just don't say nothing because I ain't, I ain't, you know, not my monkey, not my show. Like if that's who you want to be with, that's who you want to be with, not my relationship. But Ashley can't do that. Ashley can't be quiet. And what happened was, I feel like Joy was trying to explain to Ashley, look, 
I really, really like you. But I love Carmen and Joy. I mean, and Clifton. That is before her and Carmen fell out. I love Carmen and Clifton. And I really have been trying to figure out how I can make this work. And I'm not sure I can. Here's where it made a left turn for me with Ashley. Ashley says, what Joy said and what Ashley heard were not the same. Joy never said she hated Ashley. She never said she didn't want to f with Ashley. Ashley said, "Well, when did you know? When did you come to this realization? How did you come to this whatever?" And Joy said, "It was the sweet. It was that night at the sweet." It was that night at the suite. And Ashley was like, so that's what did it for you? The night at the suite is what did it for you? She was like, yes. She said, if me and you had beef, that's something that me and you could work on. And we could, I could probably forgive you and I could move forward. But your beef is with my husband. And after that night at the suite, that is something I, I've been trying to move forward and I, I just hate. And immediately, right? Immediately what Ashley did was Ashley threw shade at Carmen. She immediately threw shade at Carmen. And Joy was like, see, Ashley, that's what I'm talking about. Like, which I'm trying to explain something to you and you immediately go and you start throwing shade. I literally just told you that this is somebody that I love. This is somebody that I, I, I love. And you're now throwing shade at her. So you, you're further putting me in the situation that I'm already telling you is a hard situation that I'm trying to maneuver through. And Ashley even said, you're right. I'm throwing shade because I don't give a F anymore. Ashley goes, and again, I'm sure it was an edited scene. I'm sure that conversation went on longer than what we saw. But I can only go by what they're showing me right now, okay? I'm, I'm going to put a pin in that and say, I'm sure there was more to that conversation. But I said it last week. I said it the week before. And Clifton even said it. I don't know how you move forward and you stay friends with somebody that blatantly is disrespectful to your spouse. Whether I agree with Ashley or not, whether I think Ashley is right or wrong isn't the point. The point is, I cannot continuously put myself in a situation where you are going to be disrespectful to the person that I sleep with every night. It's not going to happen for me. And you're not making it easy because every chance you get, you are making digs. You're making digs at my best friend, which we'll get to the best friend thing in a minute, but you're making digs at my best friend and you're making digs at my husband. I don't know what you want me to do with that because if the situation was reversed, you would never let nobody see your face and disrespect quick and disrespect Alicia. You wouldn't let it happen. Part of the reason why you said you mad at Joy and why you told Joy's secret is because you felt like Joy had disrespected Alicia to begin with. So the fact that you absolutely know that you wouldn't allow it, why would you put Joy in that position if you really truly are trying to rebuild your friendship with Joy? So no, I don't blame Joy in that conversation, I think Joy was trying to have an honest, transparent conversation with Ashley. Like, listen, I do like you. And yes, we had a good time today. We laughed, we joked, we had a great time today. But the flip side, the flip side of it all is at the core of our situation is your situation with my husband. That's the core. Joy couldn't have said that at all the last sit down because she know that two events ago. She knew that too. I don't think so. I think she was trying. I really do think she was trying. And y'all know I, I don't give Joy a lot, but I really think Joy was trying, honestly. Wh whether she was trying for legitimate reasons or she was trying for the show, I don't know. But I think she was trying. I do. I'm not an Ashley hater. I don't like how she moves sometimes. After last night, I can no longer ride the joy bus, what she did to Ashley and the way she did it, I'm over her. Oh, wow. Ooh. Well, isn't that interesting? 
Joy was trying to move forward. I really do think Joy was trying to move forward. I honestly do. But I don't, I, again, I, I go back to that conversation I had at the coffee house. I don't, I don't know. I just, actually, I don't know what you want from Joy. You literally, like, there's a way that you say what you said without this without being rude and disrespectful to her husband that's just me that's my opinion moving on um so that turned that was disastrous they got to arguing ashley stormed out and basically it was that was it that was the period exclamation point that is it they are no longer trying to move forward with having any type of a relationship friendship anything of the above right um that's that. That's a, that's a rap on it. Um, Joy wants to be able to be, I mean, Ashley wants to be able to be disrespectful without consequences. I just, I'm one of those people, let me tell you, I've said this before and I'm going to keep saying this because I've said this about other shows. I hate when people are like, I'm just keeping it real. I'm just honest. I'm just keeping it real. And I have said this to you guys a million times and I will keep saying it. Being real being honest does not equate to being disrespectful. You can be honest and be real without being rude. Those are not those things are not mutual. Those are those things are not the same. They're not synonymous. I can be honest with you and I don't have to be rude. You could have let Joy know without calling her husband sassy. You could have let Joy know that you can't that you can't rock with without without using certain language that I think. It's disrespectful. I think it is disrespectful to call. I told y'all that before. I don't like those terms because to me, those terms are borderline. You get into, and I know, I know, ain't nobody gonna like it. But when you start talking about you're acting sassy, and I never seen a, a man act so sassy, and I mean you acting like a woman, you acting like a girl. I don't like that. I don't. I, I just don't like those terms. I don't. But anyway, um. I agree, Kim. They're very homophobic. And I, I didn't want to say it because I, you know, y'all know I didn't want to say it, but I'm going to say it. When you, I, I'm going to say it. Because let me say this. From my understanding, between me and you, y'all want, y'all hear me? From my understanding, that argument at the suite got really, really nasty. And some more words than just sassy were thrown around. I'm not saying from Ashley. I ain't saying Ashley said it. I'm just saying more words than sassy got thrown around. And it got really, that's that sweet scene got cut up and we got really, really nasty. Um, and I'm going to just leave it at that. So anyway. Okay, can we say acting, Clifton acts like a horrible person? If that's your opinion, sure. But I just think that I just I just I don't I just don't like when you when you make it about gender and when you make that's just like you know oh they, they he act real ghetto for a black person. What? Why does black and ghetto? Why where's that the conversation? Can you just say they're uncouth? Can you just say they they don't know how to act in public? Can you say you know what I mean? So anyway, I don't you know I'm gonna be honest with you. Phil said, what has Clifton really done in this situation? Here's my opinion. My opinion about the whole Clifton thing is this. I think things were done and said that we didn't always catch on camera because by Joy's own admission, Clifton hasn't really liked Ashley going back to that first scene of season two when they were at um, Jason's going away party and Ashley made the comment about Joy speaking at a, at a, at a single mother's um panel when she wasn't a single mother by joy's own admission cliff ain't really liked her since then so when ashley says i've always felt this energy from cliff i can believe that because joy admitted that cliff didn't really like ashley so have we seen a lot of things on camera no but i can believe that other things that things have been done and said to make ashley feel how she feels because joy admitted that cliff didn't really like her so that's how i feel about that um I agree with that, Ravine, too. I have no idea why you would bring uh, bring 
a non single parent on a panel about finding love for single parents. That I didn't think Ashley was wrong with that conversation, but it. But I also feel like with Joy, you know, I guess if somebody is gonna offer you money to come and speak on a panel, why not? But I didn't. I didn't think Ashley was wrong for asking the question. I don't. I didn't then, and I don't now. Um. So then we have um. Jamie's retirement party. Now, can I let me say this? We see everybody is the season finale, so everybody is there. We see the Duncans, we see um, Winter and Yusha, we see um, the Silvers, and of course Jamie and all of his family is there. So it's supposed to be a surprise party. We're gonna get to that surprise in a second, but it was supposed to be a surprise party, and um, everybody was there first, and um, Ashley is giving everybody the rundown on what happened between her and Joy. And why her and Joy ain't cool and, you know, they they not cool no more. And that's a wrap. That's a done deal. Um, something else happens before Jamie gets there. But they're having a conversation about the whole Joy situation. Um, no, Joy was raised by her dad. What you but Joy was asked. She took the opportunity. I understand that she was asked and she took the opportunity. That's what I said. I said... If, if they asked her and she decided to go, that's on them. But I said, I agree with Ashley that I would have, listen, let me tell you something. I would have asked the exact same question. If I were in a room of people and my friend who I know does not have children and is not a single parent told me, yeah, I got called by this, um, I got called by this organization and they want me to come talk about being ready to love as a single parent. I absolutely would have said the same thing. I'd have been like, but you don't know nothing about that. Like, I literally would have had the exact same conversation. So, again, when Ashley said it last season, I didn't think Ashley was wrong. I would have said the exact same thing. Um, That's okay, Kim. That's okay. That's okay. Thank you, though. So, anyway. Something, I feel like something else happened before... But I know they were talking about the whole winter thing and they were breaking down the whole... Maybe it was Carmen. I don't know. Maybe they were talking about Carmen. I don't know. But either way, Jamie shows up. Now, can I say something? Jamie! Jamie, you my boy and all. But you know good and damn well you knew about that party. Let me tell you why I know Jamie knew about that party. Or why I believe. I can't say he knew. Why I believe Jamie knew about that party is because I knew about that party. And I wasn't even invited. I know about Jamie's retirement party, and I wasn't even invited. Jamie, how you ain't know about your retirement party, bro? But it was a cute party. Um, it looked really, really nice. I love the the photo booth that looked like the um the magazine cover. I thought that was really cute. Um, I love how they had his pictures through the years. I did that when I when I did my parents' 50th anniversary party. I had pictures of them. I had their wedding picture all the way through the years. Um, you know, so I thought that was cute. I thought that was cute. Um, and then Albie Shore was there. Now, if you follow them on social media, you know they real cool with Albie Shore. And I have always said that Albie Shore and Jason look alike. Now, I'm not going to disrespect Jamie and Urena by insinuating that Jamie is not that daddy. But of uh, Jason's daddy, but is is I'll be sure a, a long lost brother, cousin's uncle, because Jason and I'll be sure do look alike. They absolutely and they looked alike in the pictures from the party with Jason dressed up. I'll be sure dressed up. They looked alike in the pictures. I said, but it was cute and it was cute how they got cool with him. That you know, um, Urena had tweeted that out right. So that was cute. That was real cute. And then Joy showed up to perform. Baby, what that look like? What, what, what was that? What was that, Joy? First of all, I don't know if that was edited down to the rap. And if it was, like, if you sang some songs 
and they edited it down to the rap. Let me tell you something. You need to go with production ads because they was trying to embarrass you. Okay. They were trying to embarrass you. Because if you actually sang a song, hey y'all coming in, hey everybody. If you actually had sang a song, but they chose to show that damn rap, you need to go find production and whoop all their asses. Because I thought Joy was supposed to be singing. Why are you rapping, ma'am? There shouldn't be no reason. Listen, I've never seen Joy perform, so maybe she does rap a little something, something when she does these performances. I know she just had a performance this weekend at the City Winery up in Philadelphia. Maybe that's part of her thing. Maybe she does rap. I don't know. But if you do, don't do it again. Maybe it was a copywritten song. That may have been it. That's the only thing I could think of. Because, But then, you know what, CC Freak, I would have rather them do? Honestly, and this is real talk. I would rather, I would rather that they just showed us clips of her singing without the sound. You know how they, they do it all the time where they just show you a montage of her performance and all you do is kind of get a little... Like, I would rather they had done that. Joy absolutely can sing. That's my point. Joy can sing. Joy can sing. Now, I ain't going to never take nothing away from that. Joy can sing. But I don't understand what that rap was for. And I don't know why she did it the way she did it. She reading it off of the phone. She stumbling over the words. Like, I was like, what is this? And like I said, if you did sing, and that's what production decided to show, they embarrassed you. And that's my opinion. Jamie... Jamie, your mama look familiar to me. I ain't saying I know your people, but I feel like I need to know where your mama go to church. I need to know where your mama used to work. I know your mama face. Oh, I know Jamie mama face. I ain't saying I know her, Jamie. I'm saying her face looked familiar as hell to me, but it was nice to see Jamie's people. It was nice to see Jamie get emotional, you know. You know, we don't see the big bear break down often, but it was nice to see um, that emotion. And that was a nice party. Good job, Uranus. It was a really, really good party. Um, and ultimately, everybody looked like they were having fun. Everybody was dancing and, you know, all that good stuff. It looked like a really nice event. It really did. It really looked like a really nice event. Um, how no one was listening when Joy was singing said it all to me. But Joy wasn't singing. Joy was rapping. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. Anyway. And then, conveniently, Joy had a situation and left. Joy, for somebody that wants us to believe that you did not refuse to film with people, it ain't looking good when... We constantly see you excuse yourself from scenes where everywhere certain people are around. It's hard to not feel like these people are telling the truth about you not wanting to film with certain people when we constantly see you do it. You know, I don't, I don't understand. I blame production for a lot of this. I ain't even going to tell y'all no lies. I blame production for... I blame production for 80 to 85% of this. I really do. I really, really do. Joy is definitely icing people out and tries to look innocent. She really does. Joy, listen, I'm about to get to Carmen in a minute because I don't agree with a lot of what Carmen has to say, but there's a couple of things I do agree with Carmen, and that's one of them. So let's. So after that, this is the Carmen scene. So, listen, they done played this clip all week long. So, y'all know the clip where Carmen is basically saying her and Joy are not best friends. That, you know, she's actually friends with Clifton. Um, and she's friends with Clifton. And um, um, I lost my train of thought. She's friends with Clifton. And she said that she don't like how Joy moves, that Joy likes to throw the rock and hide her hand. Um, and she, you know, she doesn't agree with the fact that Joy won't 
film with the Duncans, won't talk to Black. And she just, you know, she said that, that Joy just don't move the way she will move. She just don't like the way Joy's moving. I watched Carmen, well, I listened to, when I was leaving the airport, I listened to Carmen's interview with DJ Richie Sky. I, I did not get a chance to listen to what Carlos had to say with Dustin last night, but I honestly don't feel like he's going to say anything. I, I, I just, I don't know. I'm going to listen to it, but let me say this. This is my, this is my Carmen synopsis, and I feel like I've said this before, but I'm going to say it. Oh, the other thing we saw was Quick Left Early. And again, I already talked about this with Quick Left Early. And Ashley even tried to tell him, look, why don't you stay? I really don't want you to leave. And he was like, well, I got to go to work. I got to go home and change. She was like, well, just wear what you have on. Like, you don't have to change it. Like, you can wear that. Like, if you're going to DJ, you can wear that to DJ in. Um, here's what I'm going to say again. People find a way to make a way. Quick, if you wanted to stay, you could have stayed. You could have bought a change of clothes with a change of clothes with you. You've been filming this reality show long enough to understand that you're going to be there for hours. If you had something else to do, all you got to do is throw a duffel bag in the trunk of your car with a change of clothes in it. Here's what I believe, and this is my opinion, and I don't know this to be true or false. Um, I absolutely believe that Quick probably have a change of clothes in his car, child. Like, I keep a change of clothes in my car because you just never know what's going to happen. Quick got a pair of jeans and some sneakers and a t-shirt in his trunk. You didn't want to stay. You were ready to go when you left, and you left Ashley there. Um... Here's my comment thing, and I'm done. Because I, I really can't give... I mean, when she's on a reunion, I guess I have to give her something, but... I absolutely believe Carmen when she says that she was helping Ashley... I mean, helping Joy and Clifton get on the show. I absolutely believe that at least one of them Maybe not both of them, but at least one of them were interested in getting on the show. That part, I believe. I absolutely believe that, right? Then I believe, then I believe Carmen was never really interested in being Joy's friend. Carmen was interested in being Clifton's friend and she was trying to keep the peace by being cool with Joy. That is my opinion. And I'm not mad about that, right? Sometimes I'm not one of those people that believes that people of the opposite sex can't be friends. I'm not one of those people, right? Because I have a lot of male friends and I know that there are times when I have to be respectful of their significant other. And there are times when I have to, you know, you know, sometimes I got to eat my words Sometimes I have to be very careful in how I move because what I don't want to happen is to put my friend in a position where he feels like he has to choose between me or his girlfriend slash wife. And I believe that is what Joy was doing. I do not, I mean, I believe that's what Carmen was doing. I don't believe that Carmen ever really was interested in a real relationship with Joy. I just don't believe that. I don't believe that. I believe that... She was trying to keep the peace. So that's what I believe about that. Do I believe that Carmen wants to be on the show? Absolutely. And I believe she is auditioning as we speak. She has been auditioning ever since she decided that she was willing to sacrifice her relationship with Clifton and Joy to create a storyline. That is my opinion. Don't know it to be true. That's my opinion. absolutely believe that her and Joy spoke about the Duncans and Black. And I absolutely believe that she was not interested in filming with Black. And I, I do believe that. I, I believe uh, Carmen when she says that her and Joy talked about it. I believe that. I believe that. Um, 
what else about Carmen? I think that was it. But as I was listening to the interview, I was like, yeah, Carmen, we, I see you now. Everybody, other people may not see you, Carmen, but I see you, girl. I see you. And it is what it is. Um, let's get into this reunion. I, I didn't think that was going to take me a whole hour. But let's get into this reunion. Now, let me be honest and let me be fair about this reunion situation. My DVR did not pick up the reunion for whatever reason. So I literally was scrambling all over the internet trying to catch it. I was trying. I couldn't find it. I went into my own. I went um, you, the show streams on Max. Um, I don't have the own app, but I went on YouTube. I, you know, I, I did everything looking for the full episode. So I'm going to do the best I can with the notes I was able to take on what I was able to find. I looked at other people's reviews and all of that stuff. So I'm being fair and I'm being honest. So if I don't touch on something that was on the reunion, I'm just being honest. But let me tell you something. Here's why we don't care. When I say we, I mean me. Because all this shit is a year old. And we know that nobody on this show like each other. So I ain't really going to put too much energy. I don't know why my DVR didn't pick it up, but I ain't about to put too much energy into none of this. I'm just being honest with y'all because don't none of y'all like each other. The, the only people that still, you got Ashley and, and Winter still speaking. You have the Tylers and the Patty still cool, but I don't think there's any road to return for any of these people to repair what's been broken. I don't believe that there's any road. When I say any road, I mean any road for these people to speak again. The only incentive would be money. And I don't think there's I don't think there's enough money. Well, I guess there could be, but you know what I'm saying. It's on YouTube under extra. What you mean under extra? I don't know what that means. And then tell me what that means when you say it's on YouTube under extra. I don't know what that means. Because I tried to find it on YouTube, but tell me to write, tell me what I need to type in. Well, I type in Love and Marriage DC extra. Is that what I type in? I don't know what that, okay. I know, I know there's a delay, so you're going to tell me what that means. Um... That's Jamie's fault for talking about Ashley's adopted daughter, calling her a maid. Now, I'm going to tell you the one clip that I do want to see is this argument between Ashley and Urena. By everybody's, by everybody's review, it was bad. When you say it's on YouTube under extra, I don't know what that means. Just type extra. Just That's what I'm saying. What do I type to find it? What do I type in on YouTube, Tracy? You saying extra, I don't know what that means. Just type in an extra. Do you know how much stuff will pop up on YouTube if I just type in extra? And do I type in Love and Marriage DC, comma, extra? Like, tell me what I'm typing, please, and thank you. Okay. But let me just go through my notes, and if I, I, if I watch it, I'm sure it'll catch it. I'm sure I can catch it somewhere later on this week. And if I need to add something to it for next week's review, I will. But as of right now, um, I'm going to just go by what I have. But I heard that that argument between Ashley and Urena was nasty. Ashley did mention that earlier this week that Urena spoke about Ashley's play daughter, goddaughter, or something to that effect, um, saying that she drinks too much and she's a maid or whatever. Um, no, it's YouTube. Oh, I don't have YouTube TV, so I couldn't find it there either. I don't have YouTube TV. Oh, you I didn't, you know what? My my eyes glossed right over YouTube TV. Okay. I don't have YouTube TV, so. All right, I'm gonna just try to catch it on own. I'm sure they'll play it on own again. I just, I, I'm sure it's the way it's programmed that my DVR didn't put it, pick it up. It, it's probably not. Pro, it's not. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But either way, my DVR didn't pick it up. So let's. Okay. So first of all, let me say this. I, 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 I was cool with everybody's fashions from what I saw. I, you know, it was what it was. The set was trash. That was like season one Love and Marriage Hunt Huntsville set. It was trash. 
the lighting trash. Again, and that's based on the clips that I saw. I don't know. Well, I don't know because when I went to Max, they didn't have this whole second half of the season. When I went to Max, the last episode, I mean, the last episode I saw on Max was the Christmas episode. So I don't know. I didn't like Joy's hair. Listen, it was what it was. At this point, I can't put a lot of energy. It was a year ago, child. Winter and Ashley, um, Ashley and Urena, nasty fight. They got into Jamie's drinking. Um, oh, they talked about Winter and Ashley, how they were able to rebuild their friendship. We know that. They worked on their friendship. A lot of it happened off the off camera, but they are really friends to, to today. Now, are they best friends? No. This is not much about this best friend thing, too. Do I feel like Joy... I mean, do I feel like Carmen threw Joy under the bus by saying that's not my best friend? I don't feel like she threw her under the bus because I think that people use terms so loosely. Um, I think the rest of what Carmen said, I would not have added if Joy were really my friend. But the she's not my best friend thing, I don't know. But I do feel like Carmen was trying to separate herself from Joy and Carmen was trying to create a moment. So her reason for doing it, I think, was rude. But I don't think saying it because sometimes like everybody ain't your best friend and we got to stop saying that. everybody ain't your friend sometimes people are just they're just people you know everybody ain't your friend it's okay to be like i know her that's why i hate when people be like she says she don't know me they said oh so you don't know me now I, listen it's okay to call a thing what it is if i have seen you around we don't know each other i know who you are you know who i am but we're not friends we are not friends. But Joy didn't call her her best friend. But Joy didn't correct didn't correct it when other people said it. But again, I don't even I'm not even getting caught up in that whole best friend thing. I just don't think it's that serious. I don't think that the best friend term is that serious. I don't. Um because again, I think that I think that we get caught up on that stuff, and I just don't think it's that necessary. Second of all, I think that um, I think that um, like I said, I think Carmen was trying to be rude about it. So whatever. Quickly, just as much as Joy, he does. He does. But I don't think Quick does it so he don't have to film with people. I think Quick does it because he just don't want to be there. You know what I mean? Like, I think his reasons for doing I agree that he does it, but I think his reasons for doing it are different. Um, They tried to make Jamie's drinking a thing, and I thought I, I it, it kind of pissed me off that Urena didn't hear again. I can't speak to what we didn't see. I can't speak to what might have been said outside of filming. But I I, I, I hate the fact that Urena said, I mean, Ashley said, I don't think Jamie has a drinking problem. I never said Jamie has a drinking problem. But it seemed like Urena was so, so set on you said Jamie got a drinking problem and you drink yourself. And it seemed like she was so ready to go down that road about her drinking that it's like she didn't even hear what Ashley had to say. Right, she wasn't listening to anything Ashley was saying. It was like she was just so ready to go, boom, that she just didn't hear none of it. Um, and that was nasty. Like I said, I haven't seen the whole thing, if I'm being honest. I've seen I've seen a little clip here or there. But it was nasty. And and again, I don't know how you come back from that. I just, I don't. I don't know how you come back from that. Um, they were trying to make Jamie's drinking a thing. I noticed that in the second half of the season, we didn't hear nothing about Jamie's drinking. But if you go back to the first half of this season, it was um, a whole thing about Jamie drinking and how he, his mouth gets reckless when he drinks too much. Um, they did bring it up when he went to his counseling session. The lady asked that the, the counselor asked about his drinking. And he said, like, socially, but when I'm home, I think he said I might have a drink or whatever. I don't drink to get drunk. I don't drink every day. Like, that's not my that's not a thing. Uh, and I noticed how they sort of dropped that storyline the second half of the season. Because the second half of the season, I don't know if Jamie's drinking came up at all outside of that group session that he had with um, his fellow officers and they were talking about PTSD and stuff. I don't even think alcohol came up at all. 
So it was really weird that it was even part of the conversation because it, it wasn't a, they didn't make it a thing. I don't think Jamie's an alcoholic either. I, I think Jamie likes to drink socially, but I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't know him again. I don't know him. I don't hang out with him. But again, I don't, I don't, I just don't, but I do think just like with most of us, I do think that when, when Jamie drinks, it, it, it heightens the personality that's already there. Jeremy, I mean, Jeremy, Lord, uh, that's my cousin who I've been with all weekend. Jamie, Definitely has a temper. Jamie definitely has a short fuse. And when he mad, he mad. And I think that alcohol may add to the fuse being short. But I don't think he has a drinking problem. You know. Yeah, I, th yeah, I can agree with that, Phil. I think he gets loud. I think maybe his personality. I mean, you know, his temper gets a little more sharp. But I don't think he got no drinking problem, child. Anyway. Um... Somewhere in the argument, Ashley accused Raina of, of running a pyramid scheme. Child, it was nasty. Like I said, they said things to each other that you just, I don't know how you come back from. Um, you said that woman run a pyramid scheme. Um, then they got on little Jamie. The comment came up again that quick said about Jamie being a bad kid. So let me say this. I mean, I feel like I've said this. I'm going to repeat it because, of course, it's the reunion. We got to go over the shit again. But... I don't like the term bad when describing children. I don't, I just don't like that term. I try my best not to use it. I don't allow other people to use it when, um, I don't allow other people to use it when I'm around, but like when people say, oh, he bad. Don't say that. First of all, kids manifest that. So when kids hear you call them bad, they manifest it, right? So I would urge parents to stop using that. Like we're adults, our vocabulary should be more more sophisticated. We can come up with better words than just he bad, she bad. That's number one. Number two, I don't think quick meant, meant it um, because Ashley actually corrected quick immediately. Like as soon as quick said it, Ashley corrected quick, right? So Ashley actually agreed that quick should have said it and he should have come out his mouth, right? All Quick had to do was apologize and say he didn't mean what he said. Like, I hate when people always want to try to quantify what they say. Qualify what they say. Just say, you know what? I use I use the I use the wrong words. Like I I use the wrong words. Because here's the reality of the situation. Regardless of whether Jamie and Urena brought their son's storyline to the show or not, and brought up Jamie. Uh, little Jamie's um, past, that is still their child, right? So quick, just be like, I misspoke. I don't have. I love little Jamie. I want to see him win. I've always tried to be there for him, and I'm I misspoke. I'm sorry. Like full stop. Like that's just it. But on the flip side, I am going to say this. I'm going to say this to Jamie and Urena because, again, I told you guys, out of all the people on the show, I think Jamie and Urena are the ones that are really reality TV ready. I am going to say this. When you put things out as part of your storyline, yes, you're being transparent and you're allowing us to get a glimpse, but also know that you're on a platform where people are going to have an opinion. So that, that goes to the reviewers, right? You don't have to like what we say. You don't have to agree with what we say, but you understand that we're going to talk about what was talked about. So in the first season, y'all talked about the fact that Lil Jamie started getting in trouble in high school. I think Lil Jamie said it when y'all took them down to the hood, to the little bad neighborhood and tried to do the little scared straight thing with them. I think Jamie talked about he started getting in trouble in middle school, high school. So when Quick was comparing he was comparing his son getting suspended, saying, I don't want, like, this is a beginning, and I don't want him to go down a road like little Jamie did. Was he wrong for using that comparison? Yeah, I don't think it was a good idea to do it, especially on camera. And it's certainly, I don't like that term, bad kid. However, the information was out there. Like, Quick didn't make that up. Y'all put that information out. So, but quick, you could have really just deaded the whole damn thing by saying, I'm sorry. But 
right, Kim? He really could have just compared it to himself. Because Quick admitted that he was in the streets. He got what he got stabbed, shot, whatever. So, right, you really didn't have to use nobody else's kid. You really could have just used your kid. So, anyway. Then we got on the conversation about Jamie and Uranus marriage. See, this is what this is where I'm mad at, at. This is where I look at Carlos with the side eye and I get irritated. Some of the shit that you brought up was stuff from like season one that we done already talked about at the last reunion. Why are you bringing up old shit? Now, if you wanted to just stick to this whole conversation about your radar and this dude with the inappropriate text and this, this, that, and the other, then fine. But this is what I'm going to say. Here is... You know, y'all know that I give Urena and Jamie a lot of credit, but here's where my criticism of Urena and Jamie comes into play. I think that Jamie and Urena are really good about being transparent um, about certain aspects, but they don't want to dig under the surface. Now, do they not want to dig under the surface because they don't want us to dig? Um, because they don't want us to dig under the surface, or because they haven't dug under the surface themselves? You see what I'm saying? They may not have dealt with what's under the surface, and that's why they can't give it to us versus are they just giving us enough to say they had a storyline? I think some of it is stuff they don't want to dig deep under. I think some of it is stuff that they've moved past. Like when Carlos asked Jarena about the cheating being a deal breaker, and she's talking about something it depends on when it took place. I'm sorry, what? Because let me tell you what that says to me. What you said versus what I heard, right? What you said was, it depends. What I heard was, there have been things, we have dealt with it, and we've moved on. If there's anything after that time, then that could be a deal breaker. But anything before that time, I'll, you know, we already talked about it, and it is what it is. That's what I heard. Now, that might not be the truth, and that might not be what you said. But that's what I heard. Because when you say, oh, it depends on when it happened, what that says to me is that maybe y'all dealt with something, you know, in 1995. So, well, if it was after 1995, then Houston, we got a problem. But if it was before 1995, well, we already worked through that. That's what I heard. Now, that might not be what you meant, and that might not be what you even said. But baby, that's what I heard. Y'all feel what I'm saying? Y'all hear the difference in what I'm saying? Um, it's not okay to constantly bash, make nasty comments about quick, but it's okay because it's Ashley's husband. Wait a minute, what? It's not okay to constantly bash, make nasty comments about quick, but it but is okay because it's Ashley's husband. Oh, okay. Oh, y'all talking in the chat, child. Okay. Be respectful in the chat, please. We don't have to agree, but we're going to be respectful. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think that's what she meant. Yeah, that's what I heard, you know? So, again, depending on whatever y'all got going on, right? So, that's what I'm saying with Jamie and Urena. Y'all will give us the breadcrumbs, but y'all don't want to give us the whole loaf. You know what I'm saying? Y'all just give us the bloop, 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 bloop. But we don't get the whole loaf from y'all. So, but moving on. Um, then we got on the Ashley and Quick thing. Look, I've already said what I gotta say about that. Ashley, um, Quick, um, um, warning always comes before destruction. Warning always comes before destruction. And I feel like you have been getting multiple warnings, whether you want to heed it or not. It is what it is. Um, there you go. That's really all I got. I feel like I didn't already said that earlier on in this review. Then we get to this part. And this is the part. It pissed me off. Let me show y'all what I'm talking about. This pissed me off. This pissed me off. And I even posted this on my Instagram yesterday. This pissed me off right here. Now, this was posted on the official own Instagram page. This was posted on the official. You, you see my writing over top of it. I reposted it and I wrote over top of it. But we had this whole WWE SmackDown 
style poster that says Clifton versus Quick. And I reposted this and I tagged on, not that they cared, but I tagged on and I hashtag Love and Marriage DC. And I said, this is the bullshit I'm talking about. Why is Owen promoting these two black kings fighting instead of trying to find resolution? Hashtag Love and Marriage DC. And what I mean, let me let me expand on that a little bit. I thought this was so distasteful for the network. Now, if this had been Scotty's thumbnail or Terrence's thumbnail or hell, even my thumbnail, as a reviewer, fine. We're, we 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 create clickbait, right? We're trying to sensationalize. We want y'all to click on our video. We want y'all to come and see what we got to talk about. But the fact that you have this show, which first of all, it is about the title of the damn show is Love and Marriage. And the fact that the clip from the first part of the, of the reunion was the clip of Quick and Clifton arguing, damn near getting ready to get into a fist fight, is the clip that y'all chose to show all week long. And then you post this WWE SmackDown style thumbnail on your official Instagram page tells me all I need to know about what it is that y'all really give a damn about. It tells me all I really need to know. And here's the thing, y'all, I'm not naive. I'm not stupid. I understand that, that conflict sells. I've been telling y'all that. But what, but what this says to me is, out of everything that we got in that first part of the reunion, y'all chose to show these two men damn near getting ready to get into a physical altercation. Now, I'm not defending quick. I'm not defending um, I'm Clifton in that. I think that Quick said a lot of stuff in his confessional that Cliff may or may not have known about prior to the reunion or may or may not have had an opportunity to address prior to the reunion, and he chose that time to address it. I ain't saying Cliff was wrong for addressing it because Quick Quick did say some stuff that Cliff was like, all right, well, you said you was going to handle it, handle it. But you have two men that neither one of them are going to back down. And I just felt like the fact that it happened, okay, whatever. But the fact that own, that is what own chose to again, it was the it was the poster for me, y'all. I mean, it was one thing for them to put the clip out, but when they created this whole SmackDown poster Clifton versus Quick, I just I don't know. That did something to me, y'all. I, I don't know. Maybe I can't, maybe I'm not articulating it well enough, but baby, that did something to me yesterday when I saw that. That thing pissed me off. If I had been home yesterday, baby, I'd have went live. That thing pissed me off. It pissed me off, y'all. Like I said, it just it just pissed me off. But anyway, and again, I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna go um do a um tribe meeting because again I got some other stuff I want to talk about. I'm going to do a tribe meeting in a few minutes. I think I set it for 7 o'clock. So I'm about to get off here now so I can get a little hour to just kind of chill out for a minute. But let me say this. I'm going no, to wait till I do my tribe meeting because I'm going to talk about this hashtag boycott the Real Housewives of Potomac. And it's going to roll into Love and Marriage DC and all of this. It's, it's going to all be on the same level. Y'all going to be mad at me. Y'all not going to like what I'm going to say, but we're going to talk about it. Okay? You know, I still love y'all. That's pretty much all I have for the first two, I mean, for the season finale and the first part of the reunion. Um, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm telling y'all, I don't think this show is coming back. I really don't think this show is coming back. Um, and if it is coming back, it is definitely not coming back in this form. It is, it's absolutely not coming back in this form. Um, I've said it before and I'll continue to say, I know Winter says she's absolutely not coming back. The Duncans are absolutely not coming back. I think Ashley goes back and forth. Um, but Quick, I don't believe, wants to come back. So, you know, there's that. Um, it's really starting to look like this this Mother's Day event is really looking like it's going to end up being Urena and Joy, honestly. But Joy sounded like she didn't even know she was coming or not when they did that 
live over on Jamie and Uranus channel a couple of weeks ago. Joy and Clifton were on there, and Joy didn't sound like she was 100% on board. That don't mean she not coming. It just sounded like she was wish she was iffy. It sounded like she was iffy. Open panel boycott Real House of Potomac. I don't know if I can have a. I, we'll have to see what the time looking like. Um, Phil, I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to get you guys some content in before I go to bed. I mean, you, you know, um, but you know, we got the reunion. I mean, part three of the reunion is comes on at eight, so um, it's going to depend on the time. It's going to depend on the time. Um. Ashley said she's not coming back on Kamisha. Was that today? Ravine, was that today? I know Kamisha did her review early today. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Well, if that was today, there you go. Well, that was today. Thank you, Ravine. So as of today, Ashley said, now, did she say she was going to the Mother's Day brunch? Did she say, because let me tell y'all something. But I'm gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna send Ashley a DM. She usually responds if I ask her a direct question. She'll usually respond. Um, I'm gonna send her a DM and ask her if she's coming. I'm gonna say, look, I have my ticket for the um brunch, and I know winter's not coming, but are you coming? I don't think the Duncans were even invited, I don't think. Um, not that they would come even if they were invited, but I don't think they were invited. Uh Winter says she's not coming. So that just leaves Ashley, Urena, and Joy. She didn't mention it. Okay. Why can't y'all DC people keep a show? First, the Real Housewives now it is. I, I keep telling y'all, y'all don't want to listen to me. Y'all don't want to listen to me when I be trying to explain to y'all how DC is different. Because every time I try to tell y'all how DC is different, y'all want to try to tell me how every city, every city got this and every city has that. And yeah, yeah. Okay, well, y'all keep y'all keep not wanting to believe me when I explain to y'all why it's hard to keep a reality show in DC. Y'all, y'all don't want to listen to me. But it's all good. I really think this was a good cast. I just think I blame a lot of this on production, honestly. I think the Silvers were a really good cast. I think Ashley, the, my biggest problem with Ashley when it comes to reality TV is the fact that she can't let stuff go. Other than that, Ashley is good TV. Ashley is very good TV. She's got a great personality. I think this, I think she's pretty. She's got a great personality. I think she's funny. She's shady as fuck. She doesn't have a problem saying what she um what she feels. And I know a lot of people are not going to agree with this, but Ashley will stand in what she said. She'll be like, I said it. <laughs> but my only problem is that she is it, in this scenario. I can't say it everything, but in this scenario, she just it's been so hard for her to let stuff go. I think that Mother's Day show will be a lot of mess. I was going, but not interested in going there. Sure, you should have told me we could have got tickets together. Because I I bought my ticket and I don't think anybody else, I, I don't think, I have not talked to anybody yet that's going. So if you're in the chat and you're going, let me know you're going. But I have not talked to anybody else that's going. No, um, Xavier said, do you think if Monique and Chris had, had stayed, the show would have went differently? I'm going to say no. And I'm going to tell you the reason why, the reason why I'm going to say no is because Part of the reason why Monique left is because the way the show went season one. I can't say that's the only reason. I know her and Chris were in real life having problems. Um, but part of the reason why Monique left was because the show did not do what Carlos promised her the show was going to do. According to her. According to her. All right, so let me ask you guys a question. I'm going to get off here now. It is 6 o'clock. Now, I scheduled the tribe meeting for 7. Let me ask y'all a question. Do y'all want me to come back earlier so that maybe I can open up the panel for a little while before the Real Housewives of Potomac? Or do y'all want me to try to see if I can open up the panel for a little while after the reunion?
Y'all tell me what y'all want me to do. Y'all want me to try to, y'all want me to go live now, like come back in about 20 minutes and go live now. That'll give me a little more time to drop the link for the tribe meeting. Or do you want me to try to drop the link after part two, I mean, part three of the reunion? All right, I see one vote for after the reunion. Do what's best for me, child. What's best for me is taking a nap. That's what's best for me. All right, Phil said after the reunion. All right, I see a lot of people saying after the reunion, T is going live. Well, T always goes live after the reunion. I mean, I can't, I can't help that. But listen, we we love each other, me, T, and Scotty. And when Mims used to review the show, all four of us used to be live after the reunion. Like all four of us used to be live. You know what I mean? Like we love each other. We know what it is. If y'all don't watch me in real time, catch the replay. I, you know, it is what it is. They, we 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 understand how this works. <laughs> we understand how this works. Um, but I see most people, I see a few people that are saying go earlier, but I see most people are saying, um, after the reunion. So this is what I'm going to do. I still may come a little bit earlier because I do have a few things I want to talk about. I still may come live a little bit earlier just to give me a little more of a window, but I think I will drop the link after the reunion because what I, I feel like there's going to be a lot more I want to say after the reunion. So I feel like I'm going to drop it after the reunion. I feel like that's what I'm going to do. Um, yeah. Yeah. What's up, Jonathan? Oh, thank you. Y'all really like that little um top I had on in that picture I uh, posted. Y'all really like that top. Melly said earlier, yeah, I saw that. I may come earlier. It's 6 o'clock now. I may come before 7. Come early and drop the link later. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, y'all. But let me get off of here now. Uh, Thank you, Lolisa. Thank y'all. I appreciate it. Y'all, I bought that top last summer and I never wore it. It still had the tags on it. I had put it in my, you know, when I packed up my summer clothes, I, I had never worn it. It still had the tags on it. But I've got, first of all, I got so many compliments on it. And I really like it. It's very flowy. Um, I liked it. And it's it's a dress up, dress down type of thing. Because I, I wore it. I wore it with some um, linen shorts. I wore, it, I wore that to the baby shower. I wore some linen shorts. And my sandals, those sandals that I bought that I showed you guys the other day. Um, if you're on my membership, I did an unboxing. Well, did I do the unboxing on every, everybody? I can't remember. Um, um, and then, um, but you could also wear that top with like some blue jeans or some jean capris or some khakis or something. Like that's definitely a dress up, dress down type of top. I like it though. I did like it. All right, you guys. Well, I think I got it from Ashley Stewart last last year. I know it's from last year because it still had the tag, and I took it out of my <clears throat> out of my storage, my summer storage, um, and it still had the tag on the child. All right, y'all. Let me get off here now. So, like I said, I'm gonna figure out. I probably will come live before seven, so just be ready for that. And and just know that for the Real Housewives of Potomac, just come back. At 9.15 because I probably, the no y'all know how the notifications, y'all know how they do me with these notifications. The notification may not go out. So just be back at 9. If you don't want to come back for the tribe meeting, then be back at 9.15. All right. Talk to y'all later. Peace.